Wow, emotions are powerful. How do I feel when I'm standing in front of you? Nervous, fear, excitement. I'm feeling all of these and more. My name is Bella Ray and I'm a 17 year old software developer. Let me tell you a story, my story. It's about emotions, technology, and how we can make life a little bit better. Last year, at my school, we had to do a moonshot project for IT studies. As developers, most of you would be familiar with the term. A moonshot is an idea that is so far out there, you're pretty sure it's not going to work. My moonshot covered a serious topic, depression. Depression, especially in teenagers, has increased dramatically over the past few years. A good school friend of mine had been down for a few days. People around her said, you're just having a bad day. But was it a bad day or was it emergent depression? With my moonshot, I wanted to not only help my school friend, but other people to distinguish a bad day from potential depression. This was a pretty big moonshot. And as a 17 year old, I wasn't sure where to start. So what does a teenager do? Search the internet. Apparently there are several approaches to analyse voices and faces in order to identify a tendency of depression. But still, how should I implement all of that on my own? Here, I asked my dad, an SAP mentor, and he assured me the answer was SAP Cloud Platform. Go figure. My moonshot... <laughs> For my moonshot, I wanted to focus on helping my school community. Specifically, we wanted to allow a school counsellor to collect the emotions of the students. If the students permitted, we captured their emotions and looked to see if they felt anxious, confused or awkward. But we could also detect calm, joy, satisfaction and excitement. We now have a digitalised emotions of my school peers. Next, we needed to be able to come up with an algorithm for people at risk. We do this in SAP HANA by running queries against the data set to look for children that are often sad. With that, we have the chance for early interventions together with the school counsellor and the student's parents. All of this was relatively easy to achieve with the help of SAP Cloud Platform, and it was fast. I moved from an idea to a working prototype in a matter of weeks. My moonshot got me an A+, which makes me feel happy and excited. I am delighted to share with you today my experience in making the world run better. Thank you. And it now gives me great pleasure to introduce the SAP CTO, Jürgen Mueller. Great job, Bella. Great job. So I would have loved having all these technologies available. So please keep pushing the art of the possible. Keep following your moonshots. So thank, thank you. you very much. Let's give, give Bella another round of applause. Thank you. Bella Ray. <laughs> now also from my side, a big, big welcome to SAP TechEd here in Barcelona. It's very, very good seeing you. This is the fifth time we are here in Barcelona. And while I have been at TechEd events a couple of times, this year is the first time for me as the CTO of SAP. So thank you for attending here in person. And thanks also to everyone watching online. Two questions to warm up. First question. Who of you attended or already saw the Tech at Las Vegas keynote? Quite a few hands. Okay, that's good. Don't be bored. There is new content today. Second question. Who of you is the first time at Tech at? First time at Tech at? Wow, many people. So let's give our first timers an extra round of applause. Welcome. So not only for first timers, but actually for everyone. Please make sure to use TechEd, use this week, expand your personal and your professional network, get to know experts from SAP, get to know peers, 
It's a really good event, so make the best out of it. So most of you don't know me yet, and uh, I want to tell you one story where I learned one of the most imp important lessons for me. While I was studying, I was almost working. And most of the time, I actually worked at the university. So the professors and the staff got to know me quite well. And it was back in November 2015 when an assistant professor reached out to me. And he said he was a little nervous and sh shared his urgent request. He said, Jürgen, can you help us out? We have a research project going on for three years now, and we are supposed to present something at CBIT in three months. Unfortunately, we don't have anything to show yet. He explained roughly what the three-year research project was about and what they were supposed to, to show. And it was something like a modern museum exhibition app leveraging Bluetooth on a smartphone. Keep in mind, that was 2005, so the first iPhone was one and a half years out. So my answer was no, I cannot help you alone. But if you allow me to assemble a team with four other students, we can give it a try. He agreed, and we worked in shifts in our student dorm and even though it was tough from time to time, we actually did it. So we presented a mobile, Bluetooth-enabled museum guide application at the Computer Expo at CBIT in March 2006. But without the right team and the right skill set and the right mindset, this would not have been possible. And since then, people have the priority number one for me. In fact, one of the project members of, is, still one, is still one of my best friends and works very closely with me still to this day. So with the right people, you can achieve anything. And while working hard, we also had a, had a lot of fun too. Now, I want you to think about your happiest work moment in life so far the happiest work moment in life so far. You have it? Okay. I assume it has something to do with your fellow coworkers, with your team, what you achieved together, together. You've probably been extremely productive. But now think about a high-performing coworker who actually left your company. Or think about yourself when you left your previous job. I want to give you one shocking statistic. 89% of US employers think employees leave the company purely for money. But in fact, only 12% do. This is a huge experience gap. The number one reason why employees leave their job is actually a lack of development opportunities and career growth. Number two is a lack of recognition. $11 billion are lost annually in the US alone due to employee turnover, according to a study of 2013. So what can you do? And how can SAP help? With the intelligent enterprise, we help you bring together operations and experiences. SAP has been a leader in enterprise applications for a long time. We have the most comprehensive cloud ERP and solution portfolio to help companies run their businesses. So we have a deep understanding of operational data or data. Now, with Qualtrics joining the SAP family, we also help you capture experience data, X data. These are the sentiments, the emotions, the preferences. Looking back to our example, imagine you are a manager and you observe that your team becomes less and less engaged. In fact, some people are leaving already. So in this case, you understand what is happening. You see that in your success factors data. 
With Qualtrics, you can quickly identify why this is the case and ideally prevent such a situation from happening in the first place. So my two sentence summary is, O data tells you what happens and X data tells you why it happens. And along the way, we infuse intelligence so you can take the right actions just in time. The intelligent enterprise you see here is SAP's new DNA. And today, I'll share some very interesting updates in each of these chapters from a CTO perspective. So let's go into it. Let's dive into the chapter operations. In small companies, as well as in large companies, you need to manage customer operations. We already talked about having the right employees in place. You need to manage your financials, your manufacturing, your supply chain. Also, of course, you need to procure material. In all those areas, SAP offers a modular yet integrated solutions. You can buy one of the solutions, you can buy two of the solutions, you can buy all of the solutions. And among other things, we are improving analytical capabilities throughout the, the solutions. Let me give you an example of how we embed analytics in success factors. So far, success factors customers use multiple tools to analyze HR data. This creates all kinds of problems, especially when moving sensitive HR data around. So I'm happy to announce a better way of doing this. I'm excited to share with you today that we have been embedding SAP analytics cloud capabilities into SAP success factors. It will be available with the Q4 2019 release. Thank you. Some, some of you already understand what this means, but so let me explain a bit. You will have a single front end tool that accesses live data from across success factor solutions, such as um, employee central, talent management, recruiting. Let's have a look at that in action. With the new release, if you go to reporting from your home screen in success factors, you're now able to create, consume, and also um, modify SAP Analytics Cloud stories. But of course, only the stories you should see, thanks to secure role-based access. These stories help you to explore details about your workforce, such as gender, career level, job position distribution. And of course, you can drill down to the team level. And if you need more details about the team members or the managers, jump directly to their employee profiles. This is the advantage when you work on the finest data granularity. Of course, you can also adapt existing stories or create new ones. You can do this using the graphical query designer. Here, you do have access to data models from across all of the success factor solutions I mentioned. Join, aggregate, filter the data as needed, and then build great visualizations on top to share those with your colleagues. All of that without additional licensing cost or setup effort. Since we are using live connectivity, also without data replication. In Las Vegas, we already announced that we are embedding SAP Analytics Cloud capabilities into SAP S4HANA Cloud. Both of those will be available with the upcoming Q4 release. Only because <clears throat> S4HANA Cloud and success factors are running on HANA, we were able to embed SAP Analytics Cloud directly. And you know that most of our applications by now run on HANA. So of course, we are working on embedding SAP Analytics Cloud in even more SAP solutions as well. Let me now talk a bit about how we support your companies end to end. There are actually four mega processes that cover 80% or more what US customers ask us for. And yes, we are a tech ed, 
but I want all of us, including the most technical jobs, to have a high level understanding of these processes. Because actually nothing in a company works without them. And it's SAP's mission to help companies run better. That's why we re rethink these processes, we drive automation, we adjust them for different industries. These processes are designed to operate, total workforce management, source to pay, as well as lead to cash. They include SAP solutions, but also third-party software. And all of them have to be integrated and work together. Let's have a quick look at the total workforce management process. So first, a company has to plan how many people are needed, with which skills, in which locations. Then, of course, people need to be staffed to work schedules or to projects, and they need to be onboarded. We are all currently working, right? Even if it doesn't feel like this, we are here at TechEd and working. We all need to continuously learn. That's also one of the reasons why all of us are here. Most of you travel to Barcelona. So your employer wants you to be safe and know where you are. And also, of course, you want to get your travel costs reimbursed. Talking about money. You also want to get paid until you, uh, for your work until you retire or leave the company for other reasons. So this process, total workforce management, really touches everything from your first touch point of, of you working for a company until the last. And because we think in end-to-end -end processes, SAP offers you solutions for all of that. Learn more about other processes on our exciting show floor here in Barcelona. Actually, we do have Estelle there right now. Hey, Estelle, how are you doing? Hi, you're good. I'm good. We're just getting ready for opening the doors. Nice. That's very good. Estelle, why don't you share with us some more insights uh, into other end-to-end -end processes? Over to you, Estelle. Happy to do so. So welcome, everyone, to the show floor. We've just heard Jürgen talk about the intelligent enterprise and end-to-end -end processes. And that, this is exactly where I would like to jump in to help you understand how the latest solutions of the SAP Business Technology Platform can be utilized within your organization's processes as well. So we are here in front of a showcase called the Intelligent Enterprise Experience, which shows how organizations run their core processes end to end with embedded intelligence. And drilling down, we focus on how technology and business really work together here, and how you, the developers, the enterprise architects, the data scientists, can add value by connecting those two worlds, business and technology, with your magic. To illustrate this, let me draw on what Jürgen just explained, the processes that run through the key functions of an organization. And what is important to note here is they don't just run in parallel, much rather they are highly interconnected. Here's a concrete example to make this more tangible. Let's assume a customer places an unforeseen order for a product, which leads to a change in the manufacturing plan and the production of this product. As a result, we have a higher demand in raw materials, which again triggers a workflow of tasks within the procurement department. So we have two processes that are interconnected, designed to operate, which comprises order and production, and source to pay, which comprises the actual procurement. But how does a business user experience this interconnection within the intelligent enterprise, and in our example, the supply planner? So, from a user experience perspective, this interconnection takes place within this supply planner cockpit, which provides clear transparency on all actions a supply planner needs to take. Up here, you can see how our change in the manufacturing plan, so designed to operate, triggers an alert for projected stock out, source to pay. And I'm now given the option to get guided to the possible solutions. And looking here at the predicted stock levels based on different available suppliers, it becomes obvious that there's only one supplier right here um, that has sufficient lead time to, to avoid a stock out. Now, after asking the co-pilot for a quick evaluation of the supplier, which, as you can see right here, gives me back an A-grade supplier ranking, I'm immediately able to place the order. So all in all, convenient contextual decision-making support right here. And underlying is an integrated suite with built-in technology, in this particular case, embedded, um, embedded analytics and conversational AI. Now, you must have been asking yourself, 
Well, that's a lot of business facts, but how is such a conversational AI, such a digital um, assistant actually being implemented? And as promised, here at the booth, we don't only talk about it, we also want to show you how it's being done. So come and move over with me from the business side to the technology side of things. And here in this particular example, we would like to explore with you here at the booth how conversational AI is actually being used and configured, how a chatbot is being built, trained and integrated. And using a, using a lot of other step-by-step -step examples, we would like to enable you to use our tools and services and thereby to embed intelligence within your applications and your organization's processes as well. So let me stop here because we have a lot, a lot of content prepared for you and I would just like to invite you over, so come and join us so we can guide you through. And with that, back to you, Jürgen. Estelle, thank you so much. Thank you. So make sure you cannot miss it, make sure you visit this experience on the show floor. I have one more thing to say, as Dan mentioned, the, pro the process source to pay. And actually, <clears throat> there apparently is some confusion in the market when it comes to direct and indirect procurement. For what do I use S4HANA? For what do I use Ariba? So I, I try to help you with that. For direct procurement, you use S4HANA. Direct procurement refers to materials you use for your production. It's an industry-specific process. For this, as I said, you use the S4HANA procurement engine. For indirect procurement, you use Ariba. Indirect procurement means the procurement of things such as chairs, laptop, mobile phones, and so on. It's not industry-specific. For this, we have SAP Ariba. Of course, naturally, an integration to S4HANA exists, and the collaboration in the supply chain also happens via Ariba. A few words about Ariba. Ariba actually is the largest procurement network in the world. $3.3 trillion in the last 12 months have been ex being ex exchanged on the Ariba network. This is roughly 2.6 times larger than Amazon, eBay, and Alibaba combined. So I hope this will clarify some of the questions around this topic. Let's talk a bit more about the operations part. A couple of weeks back, I've been to China and I met a real estate company. For that real estate company, they had a period of three years where this company increased their revenue by 40x. You listen correctly, not 40%, 40x, 40 times more revenue in three years. They were the first ones in China who implemented ECC in their industry, and the CIO shared that this was only possible, this growth, because of SAP. But there's one thing. ECC 6 was launched in 2005, so this was 14 years ago. And a lot of things happened since then, right? So cloud became a big topic with AWS leading. The first iPhone was launched in 2007. Around 10 years back, Companies like Uber, Airbnb, and Netflix started to disrupt their markets. And many companies followed, changing their business models, not only offering products, but also offering services and offering subscriptions. And to support these new businesses in, their, in these business models and su to support companies in their transformation, SAP has invented S4HANA. I know that many companies are already on the way to S4HANA, but naturally, still, we get asked, why should I move to S4HANA? How do I move to S4HANA? Who else did it already? And I want to discuss these questions with the guest here on stage. So let me welcome the head of the S4HANA development team, Jan Gilk. Jan. Hey. Thank Jan. you. Great to have you. Thank you, Jürgen, and a great idea actually to talk about uh, what happened since the last release of ECC, uh, because the world has certainly changed. Yeah, quite a bit happened. So why should companies move to S4HANA? Well, I see that uh, there are technical as well as business benefits uh, to moving to SAP S4HANA. And since we're all at TechEd, let's start with the technical ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so first and foremost, S4HANA is a modern modular cloud suite that can be deployed as a service or on-premise. 
So customers really get a technology for, uh, refresh since uh, most of our ECC customers are frankly running on systems that are by now between 10 and 20 years mm -hmm. old. Uh, secondly, they have the ability to consolidate and massively simplify their IT landscapes. And thirdly, we bring our customers back to standard and drastically actually reduce the numbers of their custom extensions. Okay, makes sense. And technology refresh, also simplifying landscapes and going back to standard. Very good points. Um, what are the main business benefits when moving to S4? Yeah, very good because question. We have to make this case, even we are technology interest. Absolutely, and that's a question we obviously get a lot. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, we actually identified one challenge that all our customers share. Uh, industry disruption through digital technologies really requires them to react to current trends much more quickly uh, mm -hmm. than before. And therefore, they also need a solution that can run their processes in a highly automated way. Uh, contributing to the bottom line savings and operational excellence, but also a platform that allows them to deploy new business models uh, like subscription businesses mm -hmm. uh, quickly and realize early adopter advantages. That's why the companies do that. And uh, think about the sneaker that you can customize on a website and think about what it takes actually for a company to be able to manufacture such an individual shoe in time and deliver it in the best quality possible. Uh, with that, SAP S4HANA also helps to capture really growth opportunities and have a real top-line impact. Uh, with, uh, we enable basically a business to be much more dynamic in the way they can react to market changes, opportunities, and threats alike. Mm -hmm. And uh, these benefits are real. We see very tangible business outcomes at our customers. Uh, for example, NL has achieved a reduction of billing times by 50%. Uh, or take Delivery Hero, they reduced their days needed to approve by 90%. And uh, Himachal Futuristic Communications now need 98% less time uh, for months and reports. That's nice, that's good. Um, so we are at TechEd, so it's about technology. Can you share a bit how our technology portfolio is actually helping you implementing these benefits for our customers? Absolutely, and uh, we all know actually that technology fuels digitization. And uh, SAP S4HANA is purpose-built for SAP HANA, our flagship uh, database offering. And with that, we were actually able to converge OLTP and OLAP workloads and allow real-time analytics and planning without moving data, which in turn brings massive performance and, and throughput improvements for SAP S4HANA as well. Uh, of course, we are also using intelligent technologies from SAP Leonardo and data intelligence uh, to help drive up process automation and deliver critical business insights based on operational data, experience data, and machine data. We saw that earlier. What's the role of the cloud platform? Yeah, the cl cloud platform is, is actually an absolute integral part uh, of, the, of the offering of the solution. Uh, we are building, on the one hand, standard applications on the SAP cloud platform, for sure. We use it also as a process integration platform, as well as extensibility platforms for partners and customers to write their own code. Then. Uh, and actually, this gives customer really a chance to break free from the past with tons of the customizations uh, they put on their ERP platform, which frankly has stopped them from upgrading the systems and also consuming the innovations that we bring. Okay. Okay. I'm convinced. <laughs> So then the next question is, how? How can customers move to S4? Yes, that's another good one we always get. And uh, from my perspective, there are really three main ways that customers move to SAP HANA. Uh, first one is system conversions. The second one is new implementations. And the third is selective data transitions. Um, conversions and new implementations, they make uh, about 95% of uh, our customer choice today. While the selective data transition for me is a very promising approach, which I believe we'll see much more in the future. Um, we also have different tool sets depending on how a customer is moving. If you want an Yeah, an let's MFU. make it tangible. Yeah. yeah. All right. So first of all, we have uh, the SAP readiness check assessment. Uh, and it's, uh, it assesses actually the functional and technical impact of a move to understand the effort drivers and also then to plan for mitigations. Uh, second, uh, automated custom code adaptations are available to adapt and remove obsolete custom coding, which is a big topic for pretty much all of our customers. And then we have the downtime optimized conversion that reduces the system cutover. And we actually just had a very successful conversion uh, of Mahindra and Mahindra's 4.5 terabyte system. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and finally, we have improved data migration that offers more ready-to-use business objects and object modeling uh, for faster data migration. That's very good. A lot happened there. So I see a lot of support from SAP for you customers moving to S4HANA. So how's the adoption coming along? Yeah, you know, Jürgen, the adoption is actually going very great, I have to say. Uh, we have now more than 11,500 customers that have bought SAP S4HANA, so thanks for that. And, uh, but more importantly for me, it's over 80% of all DAX companies and 61% of all Fortune 2000 companies have now opted uh, for SAP S4HANA. And uh, you can see many of our largest customers have already started now their uh, implementation projects. And in fact, many of our customers aren't just moving their ECC to SAP S4HANA, but they're actually moving the entire business suite. Jan, that's great. So you did a good, a good job. I asked why moving to S4HANA, I asked how to move to S4HANA, and now we see these great numbers. So um, that's good. So everyone, thanks for being with us on that journey. Jan, thanks for joining me thanks here on so stage. Much, Jürgen. Thank, Thank you. you. Jan Gilk. Thank you. So what have we learned in this chapter uh, called operations? SAP Analytics Cloud will be finally embedded in S4HANA Cloud and success factors. SAP helps you driving operational excellence along the four mega processes we talked about. Also, S4HANA supports your business today and in the future. We discussed that with S4HANA you can consolidate your complex ERP landscapes, you can replace many of your custom extensions with built-in functionality, and S4HANA supports new business models, for example, sub subscription business. And many customers are already on that journey. So you don't want to be left behind. Uh, get started right away. If you haven't, we showed you how. Let's close this chapter here and come to the intelligence part. I want to share with you another story, and actually we will use that throughout this chapter here. Roughly one and a half years ago, we talked to a CEO of a beer brewing company and he was very excited to implement ERP. And then quickly after, we talked to the CFO of that company. He was quite honest with us and said, the CEO wants it, so we will do it. But this sounds like the most boring project I ever worked on. And I can completely understand as the discussions were around uh, technical things and about master data alignment, master data governance, and so on. And for the CFO, this was not at all an exciting thing, but we all know that this has to be done. And within nine months, they implemented the ERP system in the back to standard way. And during the implementation, actually, they took care of four areas. First of all, they cleaned their master data and brought together all their data silos to have a single source of truth with the help of our database and data management capabilities. Second, they integrated SAP applications with non-SAP applications and developed SAP extensions, such as a specialized quality control system to have the best quality beer. Third, using this foundation, they introduced analytics for their company for real-time insights. And fourth, they are now in the process of deploying intelligent technologies to further auto automate their business processes. So roughly three months after the implementation, we met the CFO again. And this time, he was extremely excited. What was he excited about? For the first time ever, he had real-time access to all data in the company not just financial aggregates. With the help of analytics, he discovered, for example, that they should actually invest in Asia Pacific. He recommended to investing in freezers because data showed this dramatically boosted sales. And he even analyzed return on marketing dollars invested and made recommendations in that area. So he really became insight driven and changed from a CFO being a money saver type to an investor in opportunities. And this is only one of the stories I, I want to share. There's many more because many customers face very similar challenges along those four categories. And my team and I 
we want to provide you the fastest way to turn data into business value. That is why we are undergoing a strategy and culture change. We are becoming much more business-centric and outcome-oriented. We have been incrementally evolving our digital platform to move towards a business technology platform. And while this is not the loudest announcement, I think you will see that over time, this is the most impactful one. We will bring HANA and Analytics closer together with the SAP Cloud Platform. We provide easier access to SAP data. We showed SAP Graph in Las Vegas already. We provide business services like billing as a service, document processing as a service, tax as a service. And we are also more open for example, including certain hyperscaler services. So these are four technical things. And then there's one more thing, which is a commercial piece. So we make it much, much easier to consume SAP technology as well with the new com commercial offering that we are expanding. This is our cloud platform enterprise agreement. With this, you can pay for cloud platform services with cloud credits based on your actual usage. It's like a prepaid phone card. And I will share exciting news in the next few minutes about each of these four pillars of the business technology platform. So let's look at the first pillar, database and data management. Actually, inside-driven businesses grow seven times faster than global GDP. Imagine if the beer company grows seven times faster than GDP, this also means more beer for all of us. And by the way, some of the fastest growing products for that brewery actually are alcohol-free beers. What do you need to be inside driven? You need to have your data under control. And luckily, we do have SAP HANA. You might be familiar with the HANA service, which is managed by SAP and offered on the SAP Cloud Platform. This is good but we will offer you something much, much more powerful, a cloud-native offering. So today, I'm very excited to share big news here. We are announcing SAP HANA Cloud. It is a cloud-native implementation. It will be available for purchase by the end of the year. It leverages microservices, containerization, Kubernetes, the TCO will be dramatically lower than for any other HANA system you know. You have choices for data storage and more options for data federation. So you don't have to move your data around anymore. So the CFO will be happy, and also all of you get all the scaling flexibility that you need. Let's have a quick look. You can set up HANA Cloud uh, very easily, like, just like any other service on the SAP Cloud Platform. And you only pay for the memory, disk, and data lake storage you use, paid by the hour, if you wish. With the data virtualization options, SAP HANA Cloud offers one data access layer for all your data sources. It directly connects your data from your on-premise HANA system to third-party systems and even Excel. Without the need for data replication, in order to work with that data. You don't want to have all your data all the time in main memory. It's rather expensive, after all. What you need is the freedom to assign your data from high performance, high cost, to low performance, low cost storage, and back, whatever you want. With SAP HANA Cloud, it's easy to do this kind of data tiering because it is all in one stack. You can assign your data to in-memory, to persistent memory, to HANA's disk store, to HANA's relational data lake, as well as to external data lakes, such as AWS S3, Azure Data Lake, and Google BigQuery. SAP HANA Cloud gives you the flexibility to scale up and down compute and storage capacity independently. That helps you respond to varying database workloads. You can create hybrid deployments and mix your on-premise and cloud setups. On top, 
you get full transparency over where which data resides and how frequently it is used. So a very non-disruptive transition to the cloud. Just run additional workload there and you don't, don't have to touch your on-premise system. SAP HANA Cloud will be available as a subscription offering and as a pay-as-you-go offering. And as mentioned, it will be available for purchase before Christmas. If you are using HANA on-premise or in the cloud today, you can continue using it, and we will help you move to HANA Cloud. So stay tuned, register on the website for further information. HANA has come a very long way, and this is another big step. So thanks for being with us on that journey. Thank you very much. Let's close this section and move to the next section on application development and integration. At TechEd in Las Vegas two weeks ago, I talked a lot about application development and how easy it is to extend applications using the Cloud Platform Extension Factory. Today, I want to talk more about our integration suite. I think this is one of the best kept secrets within SAP. If you look at SAP Cloud Platform integration, and I looked at all the data, the most used integrations are between SAP applications and government. It's not SAP to SAP. It's exchanging e-documents between SAP systems and governments. Let's come back to the brewery as CFO. He had another challenge. The government here in Spain in 2017 introduced a new tax regulation. Every company had to deliver invoices electronically, latest four days after creation in a custom XML format. So to stay compliant, all companies had to quickly adjust their systems. Luckily, we at SAP have a globalization team working with all governments around the world to understand upcoming regulations early on. So quickly after the law was initially passed, we already offer predefined content for the integration on api.sap.com. You can go there, just search for Spain, and you find it there. Actually, api.sap.com should be a bookmark in all your browsers. You can see it as a marketplace for SAP content. And of course, you also find SAP to SAP content there. We have a modular suite, so you decide which integrations you need. But if you want to integrate SAP to SAP, please make use of the existing integration content. I have two customer examples where we could help pointing the customers into this direction. In one situation, the implementation speed was increased by a factor of five. That was a S4 HANA to success factors implementation. In another example, the implementation speed was increased by a factor of seven. That was an S4 HANA to Kronos for time and attendance management to success factors implementation. But actually, we don't stop there. We don't just offer content. We offer an entire suite of integration tools. And these allow you to securely connect to and integrate with third-party systems. Let's again get back to our brewery CFO. They implemented S4 HANA, but they were not done with the C4 implementation. Still, the CFO didn't really care. He wanted to have an overview about the customers. He wanted to understand buying behaviors, understand pain points of customers, which are the bars and restaurants serving his beer. So he needed all that information on one single place, on one single screen. And back then, that data was distributed across several systems. They were still running Salesforce, and they were running ServiceNow. But actually, SAP is much more open than we are known to be, much more open than many of you might think. So bringing the data from these systems together was actually not much of a problem. So here's how. First of all, let's check whether there's existing content on the marketplace at api.sap.com. We provide around 1,200 integration flows together with SAP Cloud Platform. Just search for the applications you want to connect 
and then you can review, modify, adapt, or even directly deploy the integration flows that fit your purpose. To now build the integration, we first have to do two things. We have to build a connection to display business objects such as customer accounts, sales opportunities, and service incidents. For using them within SAP, we have to create an OData APIs that wrap the third-party REST APIs. And as for HANA Cloud in this situation here, was the leading system for the supply chain and for delivery. But the contexts were held in Salesforce. So we have to make sure that our beer always reaches the right consumer and customer, right? So therefore, we have to synchronize the customer account data back to Esfahana Cloud. We do both tasks using SAP Cloud Platform integration. So you can define integration flows by putting together processing steps, branches, and multiple API calls. To map data from third-party systems, so you uh, see it here, you can even be supported by our machine learning based integration content advisor that actu actually automatically suggests the best mapping fields. Now, this is done, and now um, we must establish a secure connectivity to the target system. Open connectors are available for more than 160 systems. So let's just pick the one we need log on to the third party system and grant access to our connector. So what happened here is we just opened the company's Salesforce system. And of course, you have to protect access to that such that only the right people can look at your customer accounts, opportunities, and service incidents. With SAP API management, we just do that. So, these APIs are now consumable across the in entire intelligent enterprise. Now, actually, we can get the CFO a Fury overview page that shows our customer accounts from s Cloud, it shows opportunities from Salesforce, and it shows service incidents from ServiceNow. And the CFO can actually consume the same data in SAP Analytics Cloud. He can combine this with existing operational data and with experience data leveraging the HANA capabilities that I mentioned earlier. So that way, the brewery CFO and many other companies can become insight driven, even in a heterogeneous world. That's it, so what you saw is how, easily, how easy it is to integrate also with third party applications. Actually, we have a full demo of that at the show floor in, at the integration booth. So make sure to check it out and even try it out yourself. Now, before you start your next custom project, please remember to check out api.sap.com and join our 6,600 plus Cloud Platform integration customers. And sometimes I'm wondering why it's only 6,600 customers, because this is still a lot more than Mulesoft had, but it saves so much time building integrations using the predefined content, and you waste so much time building them from scratch. So recently we launched new third party content for e-governments, uh, including uh, something for Germany and Elster text integration, as well as for South Korea, and we are continuously deploying content. So please spread the word, word. SAP Cloud Platform integration is definitely not only for SAP to SAP integration. So let's move to the next section here, which is analytics. We say that data is the new oil, but what, what does that mean? For almost any situation, you can apply this formula here. You can take amount of data times quality of data times usage of data equals data value. For the amount of data, we have SAP HANA, and SAP HANA is going cloud native. Think about our brewery CFO again. Initially the CFO didn't have any data in his system. So with that, certainly data value was zero. I already talked about the first part, the amount of data in our database and data management section. Let's now talk a bit more about data quality and also data usage. For that, it's my great pleasure to invite another guest on stage. And I brought our development head of HANA and analytics. Please welcome 
Gerrit Katzmeier. Gerrit. Hey, Jürgen. It's great having you. And Gerrit, I know you love this formula. So, um, as I said, we already covered HANA. Um, when I talked about the brewery CFO, the company had massive master data challenges. And you know that if you uh, multiply anything here with a zero, the result is zero. So, Garrett, why don't you share with us how can comp companies maximize data quality? Absolutely. Our new offering is really about filling the gaps in the data value formula. Because so many data projects fail to deliver lasting value. Because the value chain of data is inherently disconnected. We all have gigantic data lakes with no usage because there really are data swarms. We have so many self-service BI initiatives that fail to deliver data-driven decisions because there is just no confidence in the data. And there are so many machine learning and data science projects which never make it past the demo stage because the models built can't be integrated into an enterprise data flow. And Data Warehouse Cloud helps with all of those issues. OK, nice. Um, but data warehousing has been around. So I did my first data warehousing project in 2005. Um, what has changed th since then? Data warehousing is really built on this one foundational idea to have one consistent view across a heterogeneous and distributed data landscape and offer fast access to the data. And since then, since those days, mm -hmm. data got bigger, got more distributed, got more heterogeneous, and we have so many more use cases to work with data. So when you think about it, the ability to understand, model, and govern a data landscape becomes so important. But unlike in those old days, we cannot just move all of the data into one common place and take it from there. So a modern data warehouse has to connect to data, regardless where it resides, and still offer fast access to it. And a modern data warehouse lets more people connect to data and work with it. That makes a lot of sense. Um, what's the technical foundation? We have a technical audience here, so how to do that? Data Warehouse Cloud is built on HANA Cloud, and I know you just talked about that. So it uses HANA Cloud for virtual data access. It uses its persistency. It uses data tiering. Most importantly, of course, it uses its heart, our in-memory engine HANA for the ultimate performance. With the HANA Relational Data Lake, you can grow into petabyte scale scenarios without ever worrying about size limitations. And because you can freely brace data sets in the memory hierarchy, you can choose on the optimal cost-benefit ratio for any given data scenario. Garrett, um, I know you had uh, 2,000 customers register yeah. for the beta. I, I think we never had that before. And I also know that you recorded a video when customers visited you in Waldorf a couple of weeks back. So why don't you come with me over here while we listen to the customers? Sure. Let's roll the video. Accessing the data is a time-consuming process. We needed the ability to give more flexibility and speed to our business users. If they had self-service modeling and reporting these users could handle everything on their own. SAP Data Warehouse Cloud enables us to bring all our data together to create a real end-to-end -end analytic solution. So we were able to combine cloud and on-prem data with internal and external sources. With all the data finally synchronized, we get sophisticated insights. At PwC, we operate on a global level. We need to connect data between a lot of different systems and technologies of different times. We were able to connect and centralize the data from around the world and this had an enormous impact on our business users. Business can test their proof of concept in just 48 hours. SAP takes our feedback seriously. We really are shaping this product together and yeah, that's what a good partnership looks like. Now with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud we can make the most of all our data. With this connected data landscape it's easy to get the insights we need to make important business decisions. SAP Data Warehouse Cloud can set us up for the future. This solution can scale with us, so we can build off what we've already accomplished. That is uh, great, great feedback. And Garrett, 
We want to announce something today. I have an announcement. Something big. I let you do it. Are you guys ready? Because today, <laughs> I like that spirit. <laughs> today, here at TechEd, in Barcelona, Jürgen and I, Suspense, announcing the general availability of Data Warehouse Cloud for the end of this year. Okay, Garrett, that, that, that sounds intriguing, but now, as a customer, I, I would have a question, what does it mean to me? Absolutely. So I might be on BW for HANA, on BW on HANA, on BW on NEDB, on business objects, on Nomira, or others. How do I get there? I think it's really important that when we think of data warehousing, we think about the use case that we deliver. It's not about the product itself or the mode of delivery. So based on that philosophy, Data Warehouse Cloud is really the next step in SAP's data warehousing offering. So for all of our customers and partners, for example, if you are on BW4 or you are on HANA, Data Warehouse Cloud directly connects to your on-premise solution, and you can run it together as one hybrid data warehouse. And of course, we continue to innovate with BW4 and the business object suite. And in fact, I have one more announcement yeah. to make. Business objects, any news? There are some news to be shared. Because today, we are also officially announcing the beta of business object suite for the three for December this year. Nice. OK, Garrett, so I think uh, we can do a check mark on data quality. But now let's come to the last part. I know that Data Warehouse Cloud is coming out of the box with SAP Analytics Cloud. So tell us a bit more about what your team and you, what, are you, what you are doing in the area of analytics. We really want to maximize the value that you get out of data. And when you think about maximizing the use of data, it's really about three key things. It's about understanding and learning from the past. It's about being aware of the now. And it's about planning and predicting the future. And this is exactly why we have brought predictive BI and planning together into one cloud experience. Because we want you to make more confident decisions based on data. We significantly extended our natural language interface so more people can interact with the system. And with collaborative enterprise planning, you can now connect the plans across an entire company. Nice. Garrett, I think for many companies, this will be life-changing news. And I think many companies and customers are happy seeing this path, especially as you can leverage your existing investments as well. Garrett, thank you so much for joining me on stage. Garrett Katzmeier. In the last nine months, I met 250-ish customers or so in a bit more intimate setting than this one here. And I asked many of them one, how they do one more important task, which is actually CEO relevant even. This is planning. SAP Analytics Cloud is also our offering for planning. And we will migrate many of our separate planning solutions to SAP Analytics Cloud over time. Of course, you can again leverage your actual data, predictive capabilities, and use this for planning. So let's see this powerful combination now in action. And remember the brewery CFO again? I mentioned that he discovered that investing in Asia Pacific might be a good idea. So you, you just don't do that like while having a coffee. You have to do some analysis. So please welcome Michael Emerson on stage from our planning team. Michael, show us how this can be done now. Perfect. Thank you, Jürgen. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine you are the CFO of a brewery company. And you're at the end of the year and are analyzing what you should do in your last quarter. Now ask yourself, what information do you need and who needs to be involved to take the right strategic decisions? Today I want to show you what collaborative enterprise planning is all about. It's about bringing workforce planning, financial planning, demand supply planning all together to help take those right decisions. Now on the screen, you will see the profit and loss statement but you also see the forecast and the budget moving forwards in our growth plan. At the bottom right, you will see the different beer categories that we have, but you will notice also at the top left that we're not gonna meet our target. So what can we do? 
So let's go to the market overview. Another great thing about SAP Analytics Cloud for Planning is we can integrate Qualtrics, so we can align the operational data with the experience data. And if we go and look at the middle here, we've got the pale ale beer category. It's not doing particularly well, though, so let's click on it. If I go over to the experience data, we can see that actually our customers are not happy with the selection of beers that we have in this category. So what can we do? Well, on the top right, we can see that the CAGA growth rate is highest in Asia Pacific. So maybe we grow out Asia Pacific and see what happens. So let's go to our growth plan. Now, you may be familiar already with the value driver tree, where you can simulate very quickly increases or decreases in the different product lines. But what we want to do is actually add another beer to the pale ale category. Now, as we heard from Jurgen, non-alcoholic beer is, is a trend these days. So maybe we should add a non-alcoholic beer to the pale ale category. So let's do this now. So let's get non-alcoholic, if I spell this correctly, yep. And I'm going to course IPA, which stands for India Pale Ale, one of my favorites. Enter this in, apply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy just quickly some of the data over from one of the, one of the popular beers, just to give us a, an idea for the simulation. Put that directly in. And then we're going to immediately see what the impact will be on our growth plan. So that all looks good. But obviously, that was very easy. I just entered some numbers into a financial plan. Obviously, behind that, we actually need to then go and produce the beer. So let's go to our supply chain view. Now here, if we focus on our APJ, which is where we wanted to actually develop this beer, we're not going to have the capacity. So you see the capacity delta here, right? We're not going to have enough people or resources to be able to develop this. So we could just do a quick additional shifts of the workers involved in that area. But you know, that's going to improve things, but it's a, it's a temporary fix. What we really want to do is invest in the region and get this new beer up and running and have a long-term run with this. So let's go to the investment view. One of the cool features in SAP Analytics Cloud for planning is we actually have data actions where we can actually write scripts or visual formulas to create, uh, do runs of actions on the data on the PNL, for example. So here we have a headcount and employee expenses. If I click on this, I'm actually going to show you what's behind the scenes. There are two views you have. So you, if you're an expert analytical user, you can actually use a scripting view and actually write out the scripts yourself. But business users can also use the uh, visual view, where you can simply add loops or calculations, add members or dimensions directly into this view. But because we've already built it out, and this will take a little bit of time, I'm going to go back and I'm going to run the calculation. So as I said, we want to add more people, or more hires, and more capacity in Asia Pacific. So let, let's add in 70 hires for this in January. And then I simply click on the calculation, which was the script you saw earlier. We'll run this, and then we're going to see the impact on our projected forecast moving forwards after the execution of the data action. And everything's looking good. Our operating margin is up, and we're going to meet our targets by the end of the year. So thank you, Jürgen. Thank you very much. And that was an example of collaborative enterprise planning. Marcus, thank, thank you. you so much. Isn't this amazing? These are the new capabilities that are enabled. So remember the brewery CFO and re relate this to your business. Amount of data, no problem anymore with SAP HANA, SAP HANA Cloud. Data quality, check with Data Warehouse Cloud. Usage of data is huge with SAP Analytics Cloud. So you will feel it in your organizations when the true value of data is unlocked. Everyone will love it. As you can see, we had many great announcements today in this section. And with planning beyond silos, actually, this becomes a discussion worth your CEO's time. So if you want to massively contribute in your area of expertise, help your company become insight driven as well. Let us come to our next section, intelligent technologies. And I got asked, how, how does Leonardo relate to this? Leonardo is our brand for these intelligent technologies. So Leonardo, our intelligent technologies, play a pivotal role, a key pillar of our business technology platform. I hope that helps. And actually, before I became CTO of SAP, I was SAP's first chief innovation officer. And in that role, my team and I, we 
introduced machine learning at broad scale at SAP. Actually, at Sapphire 2018, we promised to include roughly 60 machine learning cases into SAP applications within the next three years, so by 2021. Let me give you a little update. By the end of this year, 2019, we will have more than 200 machine learning cases live already. And it's not about the sheer number of cases, it's actually about the value being created with them. For example, we saved service agents around 40 minutes per day of tedious work with our service ticket intelligence offering. So we help you bring machine learning to your companies by embedding machine learning into all of our solutions. What else? We learned that it doesn't make sense to just automate existing business processes. Before you apply machine learning, you should understand how your end users use the system. What do they do? What is their job to be done? And of course, you could now go out and ask all your employees in the company what they are doing. But another intelligent way of doing this is using automated user behavior mining. So we want to show you what we are doing in the area of user behavior mining. It resulted from a research project that we did together with the Hasso Plattner Institute. So this project was driven by the Spotlight team. It's an SAP internal startup working on process analysis. So in a second, I'd like to connect once more to the show floor. And you will see multiple things, of stage, multiple things there in different stages. So you will see something in alpha, you will see something in beta, and you will see our existing intelligent robotic process automation product, which you can buy already today. Over to you, Amrit. Thank you very much, Jeremy. So, all of us have to deal with the pressure to make things run more efficiently. This is the key driver for automation. In any automation initiative, we typically have three questions to answer. Firstly, how to identify the most promising automation opportunities. Secondly, how to create RPA bots and maintain them effectively. And finally, how to quantify the business improvement afterwards. Now let us address these three questions. Imagine you've been asked to improve your business process efficiency through automation. But how to find out where to start, and that ideally without spending large amounts of your time or your money. For this, we already built a tool called Spotlight by SAP, which is available today. It provides you with an overview of those processes and transactions that require high manual effort. In our example, it's the accounts payable process. Now to drill deeper into these processes, we came up, we developed the idea of user behavior mining, which is essentially um, in a pilot state currently. It quantifies the number of steps taken and the amount of time spent in a certain process across various SAP UI technologies. Now, let us have a look at the create supplier invoice application. What you see here is a detailed click flow of a process. Each box represents an input provided by the user and each bubble is a click. On the top, you also see various business KPIs relevant to this process. For example, the time spent in the UI. The slider on the top left allows you to see various um, process variants, and, uh, which is basically just different ways of doing a job. Now, knowing how your employees actually execute a job and how they actually work, we can help them automate. This will save them effort and allow them to spend time on more value-adding tasks. Now, let us come to our second pain point of um, creating an RPA bot. For this, we will have a look at our SAP Intelligent RPA Studio. Based on the insights that we gained from user behavior mining, we already extracted all the relevant parameters that are required to create the bot. Like this, we can automatically generate a customized bot fitting your needs. So creating and deploying a bot becomes a matter of minutes. Now, finally, let us address our last question on how to measure the 
business improvement afterwards, how to quantify it? Well, by tracking the user behavior over time, we can actually measure the decrease in the manual effort. Summarizing, we are currently working on a tool-based end-to-end approach to support your automation journey by identifying the most promising automation opportunities and that based on actual usage data, by automating your tasks by creating our PA bots, and finally, to quantify your business improvement afterwards. Thank you very much and back to you, Jürgen. I'm Rude. Thank you so much. Thank you. Same thing here. If you want to learn more about this, please visit the booth at the show floor here in Barcelona. And you can find more information about this, yes, take a picture, at getspotlight.io and at sap.com slash IRPA. So what you saw was how you can make business processes even more efficient by better understanding what your users are actually doing with the system. So, you have heard how we bring these technologies together in the business technology platform. And we already covered a lot, from HANA, Cloud Platform Integration, Data Warehouse Cloud, SAP Analytics Cloud, and Intelligent Robotic Process Automation. And over time, you will get common monitoring, common security, common connection management across all these technologies as well. And we are, as we discussed in the Data Warehouse Cloud section, also supporting hybrid scenarios between on-premise and the cloud. So now we went through the four sections of the business technology platform, but I want to share two more things with you. A general reference architecture of how we anticipate you working with SAP technologies and an architecture with hyperscalers when SAP is in the mix. So we defined a reference architecture for building applications using SAP technologies. And SAP is offering and will continue to offer differentiating services as well as services which are necessary for smooth operations of the intelligent enterprise. And I often get asked by customers if they can mix and match services from hyperscalers and from SAP. And the answer is yes. You can leverage best of both worlds. You can leverage the scale and flexibility for hyperscaler plus business centricity, business content, business technology from SAP. So we assessed all hyperscaler services and whitelisted the ones you can use with neither the fear of being locked out of SAP innovations, nor the fear of being completely locked into a hyperscaler offering if you don't want to. This is very much like in the R3 uh, days with the infrastructure independence. It is in our DNA. One example today here, how do we work with AWS? So let's have the reference architecture, including AWS services. And you see SAP services, and you do see AWS services, and they can be used together. So let's talk a bit more about the collaboration between AWS and SAP. And for that, it's my great pleasure to ask Dave Brown, who is vice president of EC2 from AWS, to join me on stage. Dave Brown. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Good having you. Yeah, Have a seat. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thanks for joining me here on stage in Barcelona. Oh, Jürgen, thanks for having me. It's my great pleasure to be with you here today at SAP TechEd in Barcelona. Dave, before we jump into any content, can you share a bit more about your role at AWS? Absolutely. Uh, I was fortunate enough to join AWS in 2007 as part of the early Elastic Compute Cloud team, actually based in Cape Town, South Africa. Back then, none of us could have predicted how cloud computing would take off and how much we'd be able to achieve over the next 12 years. But it's certainly been an exciting journey. Uh, today, I lead the Amazon EC2 team, focusing on providing compute and networking technologies that allow our customers to bring their most demanding workloads, including SAP, mm -hmm. to the cloud. Yeah, so in preparation for this talk, in the, as the part of the keynote here, I did a little research and found that uh, over a decade ago, um, SAP colleagues started using AWS to quickly spawning up demo systems. And then we also uh, realized that there's a lot of even private credit cards being used uh, to leveraging AWS uh, services. So after we learned that, first, then we engaged in a more formal collaboration. So Dave, 
SAP and AWS have been innovating on behalf of our customers for quite a long time. But it seems that we even are accelerating. So what, what is your point of view on the partnership? Yes, Jürgen, we're, we're super excited about the partnership. Um, this has been more than a decade of partnering together, driven by working backwards, that has helped us to figure out what customers want and what really works. Um, we've also introduced many industry firsts together, including the first SAP certified cloud offerings with two and four terabyte instances, and today offer instances with as much as 12 terabytes of memory for the largest SAP S4 HANA workloads. Also, SAP has become one of our more strategic customers, providing us with great feedback as we partner together to support the SAP cloud platform running on AWS. Yeah, thanks for allowing us to also push you. And yes, we use AWS a lot for HANA, HANA Cloud, uh, SAP Cloud Platform, Data Warehouse Cloud, and Analytics Cloud are available on AWS infrastructure. So Dave, how are other customers using your infrastructure? Well, today we have thousands of customers running SAP on AWS, and hundreds of them are global multinational enterprises. And Jürgen, it's accelerating. The slide represents just some of the customers that are using SAP today on AWS, and we've really enjoyed serving some of the world's most demanding SAP customers. Here are some of the joint customers you're likely to recognize uh, that are based here in Europe, like the online retailer Zalando, who's getting more than 300 million views a month on their website and shipping more than 90 million orders per year using S4 HANA on AWS. And one customer that really understands acceleration, Lamborghini, just migrated ECC on Oracle to HANA on AWS in only six months and improved their performance by 50%. Or well, Engie, an international energy provider, they migrated their systems to S4 HANA on AWS in half the time they expected while right-sizing their database footprint by 50%. These are great customer examples from your perspective. What has been driving this adoption? Well, Jürgen, I believe there are a few reasons. First, the breadth of SAP certified instances on AWS gives customers the best possible choice for their workloads. Starting from a few hundred gigs of memory, we can scale all the way up to 48 terabytes of S4 HANA and 100 terabytes for HANA Business Warehouse. Second, the speed and ease of deployments on AWS brings agility to customers' SAP workloads that they've honestly not experienced before, allowing customers to experiment with new ideas. And finally, along with our innovation, we're constantly working to reduce costs and pass those savings on to customers, improving overall TCO. Nice. Dave, I know you have an announcement to make. Um, what is it? Absolutely. So, while we already have the broadest selection of instances for SAP workloads today, I'm pleased to announce, available right now, SAP certified 18 and 24 terabyte high memory instances for S4 HANA scale up workloads on AWS. So these bare metal instances run natively within your AWS environment. They're built on AWS's Nitro system, which is not only more performant, but also provides access to a broad portfolio of AWS services through the AWS Management Console. All this helps customers innovate rapidly and scale seamlessly. And so stop by the booth, and we'll show you these environments running. And you can see a live demo of just how easy it is to manage and launch these large memory machines. If you, you mentioned Nitro. Yeah. So I, I, I get excited. Um, Tell me more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in the early days of EC2, uh, we used a software-based hypervisor. Um, but eventually, we realized that to really improve the instance performance further than we'd done, we needed to migrate all of our hypervisor functionality to hardware. We began to offload network processing to hardware in 2013. And by 2017, we shipped our first fully Nitro-enabled system, offloading all hypervisor functionality to hardware. And so what this really means is that we're able to give you, as the customer, 100% of the available resources on the EC2 instance without having to reserve any of that compute capacity for the software hypervisor itself. And so Nitro has become a critical part of us shipping our first eight socket-based SAP certified high memory instances, which happened in 2018, as it allowed us to provide bare metal instance experience that was fully integrated with the rest of AWS. Dave, nice. that, is, that is great to learn. Um, we talked a lot about the various instances that are available. Um, where, where are they available? What is the coverage? Absolutely. And on the slide behind me, you can see the global regional footprint where customers are running all kinds of SAP workloads today, including S4 HANA on AWS. Um, additionally, we've been working together to ensure global availability of the SAP cloud platform for our mutual customers. 
And today, SAP Cloud Platform is globally available in nine AWS regions and many more on the way. Dave, that is great. And it shows um, the collaboration of the two companies. Yeah. Actually, uh, before you leave the stage, I also want to uh, share something. Great. Um, we are announcing that SAP Data Custodian is generally available on AWS. Data Custodian enables customers to comply with data protection regulations. It is 100% complementary to what AWS is offering on the infrastructure layer. Jürgen, that's fantastic. Dave, thank you so much for joining me here on stage. And yeah, thanks for standing by with me. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to this great partnership. Fantastic. Jürgen, uh, it's been a pleasure. And thanks for the opportunity to speak to this passionate audience of SAP technology enthusiasts, developers, architects, and partners. And we look forward to seeing each of you at the AWS booth on the show floor and at our sessions later this week. Dave, thank you, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Jürgen. Dave Brown. So I hope this has given you a good overview of what we are working on together with hyperscalers. And with the business technology platform, as I mentioned, we are much more open. You have to promise me one thing. So if you have any questions regarding the business technology platform, if you have feedback regarding the business technology platform, if you have wishes regarding the business technology platform, please visit our strategy center here on the show floor in Barcelona and let us know. So we staffed it with people from my team. With that, let me close the intelligence uh, chapter here and come to the experience part. So this is the last chapter of the keynote before I wrap up. We have shared with you how you can become an insight-driven company, but there's even more to it. We at SAP want you be to become an experience company such that your Customers become fans, your products become obsessions, your employees become ambassadors, and your brand becomes something like a religion. Here, it is all about the continuous feedback and improvement loop of listening, learning, and acting. And one challenge many companies face is keeping their new hires and providing them a great onboarding experience. In fact, 90% of executives say that keeping new hires is a challenge for their organizations. Let's have a visionary look at how experience management can help, starting from the very beginning of the employment life cycle, onboarding. So remember the CFO of our brewery company now, so excited about data, he starts hiring data scientists. But for some reason, it has taken them quite a while to be productive. So to understand the problem, the CFO opens up an overview of all live onboardings. He sees how long certain steps take. This is all data. To get the experience data, he decided to run an experience management program to assess the sentiments and the engagement of new hires. Especially, you can imagine that for hard to hire data scientists, you want to make sure that the engagement index is very high. Here, the goal is to have that above 90%. But unfortunately, for our brewery, it is far from that with the 76 you see there. So to get a better understanding of the sentiments behind this low score, the CFO turns to Qualtrics. And he uses Qualtrics as dashboards and text IQ to understand that delays in equipment provisioning actually make employees unhappy. And that this impacts the new hire's engagement. So why is it? Data scientists need specialized GPU hardware. And it seems that the procurement of such specialized equipment in the brewery is cumbersome, as it needs many approvals. By combining X data and O data and using SAP Cloud Platform integration, intelligent business process management, we can listen, understand, and act. So the CFO, the CFO decides to simplify the process by removing the central procurement approval step. 
Imagine that. It's a huge step for a CFO to remove a central approval step. But here he understood that this has been a reason for bad employee experience. So removing this step actually made sense. Additionally, managers realized that the new data scientist should be paired with an operations colleague as a buddy to get to know the business better. Now, this new process variant will be deployed and future hires will actually be directly benefit from it by hopefully getting their equipment in time, being productive from day one, and actually having a buddy to share their first after work beer with. You can already do a lot of what we showed here. Have a look at uh, api.qualtrics.com and api.sap.com where you find everything about our integration suite as well. And you see all the great things that you already can do today. I hope this gives you a good idea of what you can do already with the combination of Qualtrics and SAP in the area of employee experience. So before I let you go, let me summarize the key takeaways. SAP helps you combine X data and O data while infusing intelligence along the way. 77% of the world's transaction revenue touches an SAP system. This tells the scale. SAP has always been the leader for enterprise applications. And we continue harmonizing our solutions along end-to-end -end processes. You learned more about S4HANA and embedding SAP Analytics Cloud into SAP S4HANA Cloud and into SAP SuccessFactors. Also, regarding intelligence, we not only introduced the business technology platform, but launched a firework of announcements here today. So SAP HANA Cloud GA, new third-party e-government integrations, Data Warehouse Cloud GA, Business Objects BI 4.3 beta, Spotlight in restricted beta, Intelligent Robotic Process Automation, which you can use already today. And we shared how we work with hyperscalers to provide you the best combination of SAP plus hyperscaler. The dedicated reference architecture is proof of that change. SAP Data Custodian is generally available on AWS. And for me, all of that is just the beginning. My main goal is to br bring together all the great SAP products, and while doing that, having standalone use cases in mind as well. So you can use our technologies for non-SAP use cases as well. For example, we showed, we showed a few examples, or we also do have Salesforce customers running SAP Analytics Cloud for sales planning. Then today we talked about experience and that the combination of X data and O data can massively improve employee experience. You can leverage SAP intelligent business process management to adjust your processes based on X data and O data insights on the fly. Here's also an overview of the great things that we announced in Las Vegas two weeks ago already. Make sure to watch the replay or you can also find all the announcements at a glance in our TechEd News Guide. I will do one more keynote, actually at TechEd in Bangalore on November 13. So you can still register, and you will also be able to watch the keynote online. There will be many more things. So I will be covering the remaining areas of the business technology platform and go in even more details, for example, into C4HANA, but also into Steampunk, our ABAP in the cloud. I'm already looking forward to that. So stay tuned. And with that said, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching online. Have a great tech at here in Barcelona. Make use of all the learning opportunities here on site and also online at opensap.com. Thank you very much.